Welcome to Tech for PD. I'm Chad Jackson. And I'm Jim Brown. Today on Tech for PD, we're going to be talking about platform design and modularity. That's right. And don't forget to vote on this one because the consequence is going to be a good one. It's up to you. Someone's going to get a really bad haircut. <laughs> so, Chad, why are we talking about modularity and platform design today? Well, um, there's been a big move towards product customization. I think, you know, we've seen that in a lot of different industries. And people are looking at platform design or modularity as a way to still offer it a lot of variations on the product, but yet keep the number of designs that they develop to a controllable number, yeah. essentially. No, absolutely. And, and I think we've also seen um, people that even aren't in customization using platform design yeah. um, to try and go to a common platform and reuse that across multiple products for efficiency, uh, for cost control reuse, yeah. and uh, also to improve quality because you're not reinventing the wheel every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, from an enabling technology perspective, there's a couple different ways you can approach this mm -hmm. problem. A lot of people have used CAD as a primary way to uh, kind of take it on. However, there it, it's not all that easy. I mean, the issue you run into there is you have a lot of variants. You really want to bring those up to verify and validate that they perform right. as you would expect. The only issue is, you know, how do you check all those variations in CAD? I mean, it's it can be overwhelming, for right. sure. Well, and there tend to be a lot of rules involved in that and trying to figure out exactly what's going to work. And that's why, yep. from a business process perspective and a rules perspective, PLM has started to uh, offer some capabilities. Um, yeah. I, I think of some specialty vendors that have done that, like um, DriveWorks and iMark, TDCI, and, and really a host of others. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. And there's some, some of the suite providers as well, mm -hmm. the guys that offer both PLM and CAD have uh, come a long way too. So you look at someone like a PTC, they mm -hmm. actually have a, an app for Creo right now. Uh, you look at Siemens PLM, they acquired RuleStream, and also Dassault offers a lot of capability through Katia as well. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a lot, and you have to mention Autodesk as well, I think, in terms yep. of their capabilities with Inventor. So a lot going on in this area. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get into the debate. So Jim, uh, from a technology perspective, both PLM and CAD uh, can be involved with platform design, right? But but which technology do you think should take the lead? So I, clearly, I think PLM should take the lead um, for configuration and modularity. Um, and, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is companies have lots of business rules. Um, they have uh, engineering rules as well that are calculations and rules of thumb that they've come up with to drive quality products. But there are also a lot of business rules as well about what orders we want to take. And for a product to be commercially successful, it needs to not it needs to not only be technically successful and sound, but also it needs to be commercially sound. And, and those kinds of things come out of a PLM system. So, so PLM should take the lead and drive the configurations oh. into CAD. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know, I, I have a different opinion. So I think CAD should take the lead. Uh, and the main reason is because, you know, it, it is used to technically validate and verify the performance of the product right. uh, to make sure that Errors that usually happen downstream are avoided, like change orders, and scrap and rework, and things like that. So I, you know, I, I think it makes uh, it's a natural fit for that. It, it is, but then what happens is people end up with these, whether you call them 100, 110 percent bombs or super bombs, with mm -hmm. every possible component in it, and and it just it's incredibly brittle, right? Once you mm -hmm. put it together, it's hard to really validate from there unless you have specific configurations and where the configurations come. I think they have to come from PLM. So ideally, we're dynamically actually dropping things into those assemblies into the cabin. Um, as hmm. opposed to having you know, <clears throat> this huge, brittle um, super bomb. Yeah. Well, the, the only issue I have with actually a couple issues, um, a lot of times you might be dropping a bill of material into CAD that won't feasibly work. Um, but also, you know, if you just look at the product development process overall, usually business requirements are handed over to engineering and then the technical issues are addressed. So it really, you know, using CAD as a leading technology kind of reflects the way people are doing it today. Yeah, well, it's not working very well in a lot of cases <laughs> today, but uh, I think what we're going to have to do is let the audience decide yeah. on this one. So Chad, what do we see happening in the future? Uh, well, I think we're going to see a lot of movement come from the CAD and PLM side of things, mainly just integration. I, I think our discussion, I think we uncovered a lot of ugly warts on both sides of it, right? I mean, a lot of people are having a lot of trouble with it. 
So I think that having a closer handshake between the two is going to be a big step forward. And I, I think some people are thinking about that right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think the other thing that we're going to see is um, moving CAD and PLM integration all the way up towards the customer. Um, ERP has a lot of sales configurators, pricing configurators, and have a lot of business rules in them. And I think we're going to start to see a lot of, uh, a, mm. a lot of integration, whether it'll be PLM vendors taking their capabilities all the way up to the customer or doing integration with uh, some yeah, of the configurators point. that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, I also think we're going to see a lot on the, uh, you, you mentioned validation. I think we'll also see a lot more on the automation side driving into simulation to actually validate design. Yeah. Um, of course, it would be coming from PLM to CAD to simulation. <laughs> so. Maybe not. But uh, another point that goes along with that is mobility in the cloud. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of resources up in the cloud, especially when you talk about automation, whether it's uh, for simulation, kind of the verification and validation of things. Sure. Or, you know, even to talk about the business rules. Right. To automate those. Uh, and... I think we know that a lot more roles are mobile today, especially sales. Absolutely. Right? So and mobility could be a big enabler for them within platform design. So configure it on your tablet and just hit print. It comes out the 3D printer, right? Of course. Sounds good. Yes, that's right, folks. Uh, I didn't get the most votes uh, again uh, for this debate. Now, the consequence uh, has been the polar bear swim, but here in Austin, Texas, it's cold, uh, but the water isn't quite cold enough, so we decided to switch up the consequence, and, and I'm actually going to be doing the consequence for the next episode, which was a crazy haircut. Take a look. So there you have it, Jim, I tip my hat to you. Thank you for joining us, and we'd like to thank our founding sponsor, PTC. See you next time on the next episode of Tech for PD.